Coming up, stormy weather. We'll take a look at the science behind storms and how you can prepare. Then, guiding light. They're a symbol of summer and so much more. The history of lighthouses explained. Also ahead, seeing red. These new pandas just stepped out for the very first time, and we're in South Carolina with details. Plus, perfect companions why some kids and grown ups are choosing cats over dogs as their family pets. Cat ownership is, is really becoming more popular. They're just a lot easier to care for sometimes um, than dogs. And then also, just we've seen so many benefits of cat ownership. And one summer camp giving kids who are very sick a chance to laugh, smile, and just be kids. It feels really nice having shared experiences with the campers because it's something that the campers don't see. Once I finished my first summer, like I kind of knew I wanted to be a counselor. Like this place was so special to me. This is NBC Nightly News Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I'm Lester Holt, and it is nice to be with you guys. Hope you're having a great week. We've got a super lineup ahead, including our picture of the week. Plus, we'll introduce you to the Little League World Series champs. But first, we want to begin on the weather front and one of the stories making headlines this week, and that's Hurricane Idalia. Did you know that warmer weather is helping the Atlantic hurricane season intensify? Here to tell us about the science behind these powerful storms is our good friend Al Roker. Weather is something we experience every day. We check it to see what we wear, if our ball game's going to be canceled, and when we can go outside to play with our friends. We have sunny days, rainy ones, and sometimes really stormy weather. One of the planet's strongest storms is a hurricane. But how does it form? A hurricane is a large and powerful storm with winds that can reach up to 200 miles per hour. From space, they look like a giant spinning pinwheel hundreds of miles across. Clouds rotating around the center where conditions are clear and calm. This is called the eye. Hurricanes form in water that's at least 80 degrees. In the Atlantic Ocean, most hurricanes form when the water is warmest between June and November. The water warms the air above it, causing it to rise. As the air rises, clouds and thunderstorms form. To replace the rising air, winds at the surface start to rush in. This air also rises and forms even more clouds, making the storm bigger and stronger. The winds get faster and faster, and when they reach 39 miles per hour, it's a tropical storm and gets a name. When the winds hit 74 miles per hour, it's officially a hurricane. As long as hurricanes stay out over the ocean, they're pretty harmless. But sometimes, winds can push the hurricanes toward land. They might curve to the north and miss us, but other times, they hit the coastline with heavy rain, flooding, and strong winds. So, how do forecasters know what's happening inside the storm? They fly right into it. Why? So they can gather information about the storm. What are the three things you can do to make sure you and your family are prepared? Know where to get weather information. Weather.gov. NOAA.NHC.gov and your local news. Know where you'll go, like with a relative or to a shelter. A list of important items to take with you, including a flashlight, a phone, a tablet charger, and favorite snacks. Talk to your folks, make a plan, and you'll be ready if a storm comes your way. Al, thanks very much. Let's head now to California, where a harmful algae bloom has hit one popular marine mammal pretty hard this summer. Let's get details from our friend Callie Lichter. This summer, all along the California coast, sea lions are getting sick and showing behaviors that are out of character, all because of toxic algal blooms. Even though these blooms are natural, some, like this one, can be harmful. The culprit is Pseudonychia, a type of toxic algae that affects the nervous system. This year's bloom was formed under ideal conditions for this harmful algae to grow. This algal bloom can be traced back to upwelling in California waters. This is when winds blow the hot water away from shore, letting cold water come to the surface. But most algae are good. Jennifer Runyon at the Aquarium of the Pacific says it can be vital for ocean life. Algae are really important because they're the base of the algae food chain. Animals like sea lions will eat algae as it floats in the water, 
but when it's toxic like this year's bloom, it can cause them to act out of character. There were over like 100 sea lions that really kind of looked tired and just kind of lazy um, and didn't really quite know where they were. Aquarium with the Pacific's Pinniped Patrol keeps watch over the beaches, flagging any animal who looks to be in distress. The patrol notifies their partners at the Marine Mammal Care Center, who rescue the animals. <laughs> Professionals like head veterinarian Dr. Lauren Palmer. We've had bloom events before. I think this one is geographically bigger. But certainly having 99 animals come in in a month was a high number. Despite being rescued, these sea lions still aren't out of murky waters. There's no real treatment for the toxin. But there's still hope for these marine friends. What are some of the hopes for these animals that are infected? Some of them can make a full recovery and just be completely normal back out to the wild with the help of several different organizations that kind of look after a lot of these animals. But a lot of them can return back into the ocean and they can live a full, normal, normal, happy life. If you come across an animal who seems sick, Runyon says to contact your local marine authority and keep your distance. But keep in mind, some marine mammals though, like a lot of times seals, actually just like to be lazy too. They may just be soaking up the sun on the rocks. Callie, thanks very much. Well, this Monday is Labor Day, an annual celebration that has come to symbolize the unofficial end to summer. But this holiday means so much more than barbecues and picnics. Did you know Labor Day is observed the first Monday of every September, and it's a day to recognize the achievements of American workers and contributions they have made to this country over the years. The first Labor Day holiday was celebrated back in 1882 in New York City. And guess what? Labor Day became a federal holiday in 1894, signed into law by President Grover Cleveland. Let's turn now to the sports world and a dramatic finish to the Little League World Series. The team from El Segundo, California, clinched the championship this week with a game-winning home run defeating Curacao. El Segundo becomes the eighth team from California to win the Little League World Series. Congratulations. Time for our picture of the week now and check out these baby red pandas who just stepped out of the Greenville Zoo in South Carolina. The two cubs, a boy and a girl, were born this past June, making them just two months old. The zoo says the panda cubs have started visiting with mom occasionally and expect them to join mom on a more regular basis as they get older. Red pandas are an endangered species in the wild, which means this birth is great news for the future of these cuddly creatures. Well, they are a symbol of hope and safety and have also served as a guiding light for hundreds of years. Our friend Jesse Kirsch takes a look at the history of lighthouses. They're big, bright symbols of summer, protecting mariners from perilous coastlines and attracting tourists with stunning panoramas. Did you know the United States is home to more lighthouses than any other country in the world? Michigan has the most lighthouses with more than 115 along the Great Lakes. And the oldest operating lighthouse in the nation? That's in Sandy Hook, New Jersey. It was completed back in 1764. For centuries, lighthouses have helped people navigate at sea, especially during storms. But it turns out lighthouses can be even more. You might live by the water. You might even have a spiral staircase like this in your vacation home. But how many of you have something like this on the top floor? An actual working beacon. That's because I'm not just at the top of a house right now. I'm on top of a lighthouse. Sheila Consul thought this Lake Erie lighthouse was such a great escape, she bought it for about $71,000. So come on in. There's 360 degrees of water. The views are unbelievable from the top. You add that to the intrigue and to the uniqueness. It's what I call the ultimate summer home. Thanks to the National Historic Lighthouse Preservation Act, people can buy a lighthouse. The federal government publicly auctions off historic lighthouses that the U.S. Coast Guard determines are no longer needed. The Coast Guard didn't need all of these lighthouses, but knew they were important for our communities and for our history. There's only so many lighthouses in the United States. And if people don't step up and take care of them, they're going to be gone. Did you know the U.S. Coast Guard is the owner of most active lighthouses, or at least the beacon itself? 
Some mariners still prefer lighthouses over GPS, so the Coast Guard has to inspect the light and foghorn once a year. Our mission, unfortunately, isn't the preservation of historical aspects. It is the safety of the mariners, i.e. the light, the sound. A guiding light still shining bright today. Jesse, thanks so much. Well, August is Clear the Shelters Month, a nationwide pet adoption and donation campaign that helps find loving homes for animals in need, including those perfect feline companions. We get details now from our friend Ava Maldonado. Throughout this month, pet lovers across the country are on a mission to help clear the shelters. The shelters are filled. We just have so many kittens, cats, and we really, really need to clear the shelters to give them more space in someone's home. Many shelters across the country are overpopulated. A big reason why we have overcrowded shelters, both in New York City and across the country, is because animals reproduce so quickly. This is a larger crisis that has actually spread across the country over the last several decades. And there's just not enough capacity there are not enough fosters, there's not enough shelter space, there's not even enough adopters. Animal experts say one of the reasons why shelters are overpopulated is because some pet owners can no longer afford to take their pet to the vet, which is key to the pet's health and well-being. We definitely encourage all of our cat owners to get their cats spayed and neutered. Organizations like Flatbush Cats in Brooklyn, New York offer affordable vet clinics. If a pet visits a vet within the first year of their life, it will dramatically improve the rest of their life and reduce the chances that they ever end up outside or in an overcrowded shelter. It's kitten season right now, and that means a lot more cats. I think one of the best things about cats is their independence and they really are not necessarily looking to us every moment of the day for instructions on what to do next. That's why adopting a cat is especially important this time of year. Cat ownership is, is really becoming more popular. They're just a lot easier to care for sometimes um, than dogs. And then also just we've seen so many benefits of cat ownership. You know, they've done studies where um, people who own cats have lower blood pressure. They have lower stress in their lives. Cats can make for great companions. We've seen the studies that show how important that human-animal bond is, and people realize that they can have that bond with their cat. And cats are really uh, great. Another thing cats are great at, sleeping. It's not uncommon for cats to sleep 12 to 16 hours a day, you know, so they sleep a lot. Um, but when they do um, wake up, they're very active, and that's just a normal evolutionary trait for them. So most of the time, if you see your cat sleeping 12 hours a day, that's probably normal for your cat. And what about the purring? Most of the time, if you're home with your cat and they're purring, it's probably because they're just happy and they're relaxed. Did you know cats can live a really long time? I've treated cats at my practice that were 22 years old, so cats can live for a really long time. Indoor cats have a much longer life expectancy than cats that go inside and outside, but it's not uncommon for a cat that lives in the house to live past 15 years of age. So if you're thinking of adopting or adding a pet to your family, cat lovers want you to consider felines as the perfect choice. They really sort of um, have their own personality and the relationship that you have with them is based on, you know, it's on their terms and we, we love their quirks and all the unique things that make them special. This is RuPaul. She was born with um, a deformity, so she can't use her back leg. So she just walks on her front legs. And I think there's this preconceived notion that, you know, dogs have tons of personality and all cats are kind of the same. And nothing could be further from the truth. Um, anyone who owns cats will tell you every cat has a very unique personality. And, um, you know, the bonds that I see cat owners, cat parents have with their cats is just so strong. That human-animal bond is so important. I promise you it will enrich your life and you'll also be safe the life of a cat. Ava, thanks so much. That's really important work they do. Finally, in our Inspiring Kids series, a special program in Connecticut is providing some children who are very sick with a camp of their own. We get details now from our good friend, Kristen Dahlgren. When Carly DiMartino first attended summer camp, her life changed forever. When we started our first activity, it was just something that I'd never experienced before, and it was so amazing. 
When Carly was 10, she was diagnosed with cancer. She saw a poster for Hole in the Wall Gang Camp in Connecticut, a camp specifically designed for kids with serious illnesses. For the children who attend camp, I, I think it's an opportunity for them to see the fullness of themselves, so much more than just their illness. And in, in looking around and seeing other children with similar illnesses, that illness isn't the defining feature anymore. And they can begin to define themselves through all the other things that they are, their personality, their interests. So it's, it's a place of great freedom. Once I finished my first summer, like I kind of knew I wanted to be a counselor. Like this place was so special to me. Carly loved the camp so much, she kept going back every summer for four years in a row. It feels really nice having shared experiences with the campers because it's something that the campers don't see people like them very often. So it's nice that camp is a place where they can see people um, both their age and people older than them succeeding. And this summer, she went back to camp again, this time as a staff member. I had always looked up to my counselors and I was excited to be someone um, that other campers could look up to. Carly worked as an arts and crafts counselor, helping campers have the same experience she did. Camp CEO Jimmy Canton says Carly is a warrior. I am so proud when I see, when I see Carly camp. It's such a hopeful, experience to bring our former campers and our current campers together. Whether you're a camper, a counselor, a volunteer, it's just such an incredible place that you can't not feel happy. Happy to share the joy of camp. Kristen, thanks so much. Well, that's going to do it for us parents. Just a reminder, if your child has a question about any topic in the news, email a video to us at nightlynewskids at NBCUni.com, and we'll try to answer them in an upcoming episode. You can also follow us on Instagram at nightlykids. Thanks for watching, and remember to take care of yourself and each other, and have a great Labor Day weekend. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.